Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Music of the Week. I'm J.K. Janice. Sorry, I've been watching a lot of uh, Dead Meat Kill Counts lately. Um, I don't know why I'm not really a big horror fan. But yeah, we have uh, five arms to go through this one for the last episode of July, technically speaking. Uh, even though this is being recorded on August the 4th, 2022. And will likely be uploaded later as soon as it's been edited. But yeah, we have five arms to go through. So let's just go through them. We start in Nagoya, Japan for Cold Rain and their seventh album, Non-Negative. Now, these are a band I've been quite familiar with for a long time, but never really sat down to fully listen to one of their albums, which I think this is their first in... Uh, since 2018? Could be wrong, let me just double check. Uh, no, since 2019, so... I would have been more into their style back then, but I just... I uh, didn't get around to it. However, um, this spoiler this gets the lowest grade of this episode, and that grade is B plus. I think the only reason why I'm giving it that is because I'm not as familiar with Cold Rain as I'm with the rest of the bands that I'm going to be covering. Who I can't wait to get to. But for my first Cold Rain album, for like the specifically really good Japanese style of metalcore, I really liked it. It's not as inventive as other Japanese acts can be, and I feel like maybe in some areas Cold Rain were finding it in, but I don't know, it's just some really good metalcore for them, you know, uh, re really good uh, lean on the post hardcore side, I like the uh, more positive lean of the lyrics, and there is a song about how shite 2020 was, just called 2020, which I think is my favourite song on the album, there's also a really good cover of Don't Speak by No Doubt, and even though I'm not the biggest No Doubt fan, uh, even though I did cover them for backtracking, no, um, Don't Speak is a really good song, and yeah, Cold Rain just have really good performances, uh, really love the production, I think that's probably the cleanest part of the album. Uh, structurally, it does feel a little bit repetitive at times, but you know what, I'm more than fine with that. Um, Cold Rain are a really, really good band, and I can't wait to listen to their next one because I would consider myself a full fan of them now, and I'm sorry it took me so long to get into them. Next we go to Sacramento, California for Dance Gavin Dance and their 10th album, Jackpot Juicer. Now, this is another band, well, this is the first band I'm super familiar, uh, familiar with of the four I'm about to be talking about, including Dance Cover Dance. And this album is not without its controversies, I'm aware of that, because of, for one thing, Tim Freerick's passing, may he rest in peace, and also the sexual misconduct allegations against Tillian Pearson. So this is likely going to be Tillian's last album with the band. Having said that, I am sometimes foolishly a man who separates the art from the artist, Sometimes a bit too much for my own good. And this album gets an A. I'm not even going to apologise for how great the album itself is. And Tillian is still a great vocalist. And this might be screaming vocalist John Messer's best performance as well. Will Swan is still a fantastic guitarist. Pretty much everyone is on point here. This is my third Dance Game and Dance album, by the way. So I was pretty familiar with their sound by this point. But they're just a band who usually only do one thing. But they always are finding ways to improve on that one thing. And... Uh, one of the other things that they're also great with is their band chemistry, even though this is the band's last with Tim Freyrick, you can still feel his ghost on a lot of these songs, and his bass performance is still really, really good too. Um, I really wish that they'd written a song for him, they might have, because Dance Gavin Dance lyrics are very well known for not being easy to understand, and for often being a little bit piss takey at times, but it is reined in a lot here. Um, yeah, production's great too, um, this band has been on Rise Records, and this might be one of the few good bands on Rise Records, hot take, and structurally, it's the longest album of the episode, it's over an hour, it's almost an hour and three minutes to be exact, but, uh, there's a lot of just really fun shit to go around, so if you're willing to ignore the controversy surrounding this one, as I am, then go and find it, it's really, really good. Next we go to Brisbane, Queensland, Australia, and as you all know, I love Australia, for Doom Rats and their fourth album, Rare, Real Rare Whale, excuse me. It's a very difficult one to say. So, yeah, uh, Doom Rats are a band that I quite like. I've only heard one other album by them, though, which was 2020's Hurry Up and Wait, which was a really, really good album. And one of my favourites is 2020, that didn't make my top 30. I don't know if this one will, but I'm still giving it an A grade because I really, really like it. For one thing, I like the more mature tone. It feels a bit more pop punky as opposed to heavy punk rock, which is something that they're a bit more known for. Um, but I just really like this band. They come across as really charming goofballs. They're just really affable and just very easy to like. Um, I like their lyrics as well. It's some of their punniest work, as they themselves have said in interviews that I've read about it. Um, and it's just... It's really good puns, I can't really remember any off the top of my head. But yeah, there's just some really good shit here. The performances are great, obviously, and the lead singer, whose name I forget, puts in some of his best work, as well as some of his best guitar work as well. I wish he would do more solos, because he's really good at them. Um, I like the production a lot as well, and I can only assume that the band did, the, uh, did that themselves. It does fall a bit short in the structuring, which is both a 
literal thing and a figurative thing because eh, it's not as long as I'd like it to be. And there's only 10 songs. The band are not known for doing really long albums, but yeah, I wanted this one to have a little bit more to it, but still, it's really fun, it's really great, and I'm just glad that a band like Dune Rats exists because they remind you of how fun pop punk can be and how you really shouldn't take it too seriously. So if you want pop punk that doesn't take itself seriously, then just listen to any Dune Rats album, but especially Real Rare Whale, if you're able to say it correctly in one take. Next we go to London, England for Ithaca and their second album, They Fear Us Now. This is another band I know. I caught their 2019 album, The Language of Injury. I think a friend recommended it to me or I just saw it being talked about by someone. It could have been Crash Thompson, I don't really remember who. And they spoke very highly of it, so I decided I'll check it out and I really liked it. And that was in my top 30 of 2019. Very good chance that this one's going to be my top 30 of 2022 because this gets an A plus all across the board. Love of the, more than anything, I love the performances. Uh, Jamila Azuz has incredibly improved as a vocalist. Her clean singing is a lot better now. The fact that she actually tries a bit more clean singing here is really, really good. There's more cohesion with the sound. There's just really better production all around. I like the direction of the sound specifically. Um, again, not the longest album, but there's still so much packed into it. And... More importantly, I love the more uplifting tone that this has compared to The Language of Injury. I did like The Language of Injury, but I felt like it could be a bit too dark at times. But this time is more... a, a bit more realistic, you know, uh, I guess is the best way to put it. And also, thank God that the band aren't on Holly Raw anymore, because fuck Holly Raw. Obviously, you can't really be on a, a, a record label that's been defunct for a couple of years, considering the shit that's happened to it, but fuck Holly Raw. And Hazel Records is a really good UK label, so I'm glad that Ithaca are on a different and much better <laughs> UK label. And yeah, this album is just really fantastic. The performance is great. Jamila Azuz, again, incredible vocalist. I love the riff work, especially uh, the lyrics, again, focusing on um, very important political and religious themes. It's just really good stuff. It's like a slightly less heavy version of Venom Prison, if I could put it that way. Um, but yeah, uh, Ithaca are glowing up to be one of my favourite bands from the UK in a long, long time. So go and check this one out if you need some really fucking heavy female-led post-hardcore punk. This will definitely fill the gap for you. And speaking of hardcore punk, finally we go to Orange County, California for Stick to Your Guns with their seventh album, Spectre. So this is another band I know about quite well. Um, I'm... A really big fan of these guys too, and no surprise, uh, this one also gets an A plus all across the board. Uh, <laughs> one thing I like is that they teased trying out new stuff on their last full album, True View, which came out in 2017. I know they've put out an EP in the time between, but I don't count those. Um, but having said that, I just really like that they bothered to take a different direction and approach from those part. I like the fact that Tom Searle from Architects, God Rest His Soul, did write the breakdown for one of the songs on the album titled More of Us Than Them, which is the first sort of like single that they used to promote it. And the band just have a fantastic occasion as well. I'm glad that they've kept the lineup they've had for about 10 years now, even though the band's been around since 2003, but ever since Josh James joined in 2012, their sound has been a bolstered. I uh, love the guitar work of James and Chris Ross, and love Jesse Barnett's vocals as well. They've come so goddamn far, and I love how he's, how fucking insultingly easy it is for him to switch between the lower clean stuff and the much heavier screaming. Uh, I love the bass work of Alex Rose, love the drum work of George Schmitz. I just really like, is it Alex Rose or Andrew Rose? Let me check. It's Andrew, so I was only slightly wrong, but I got the Rose part right. But yeah, I know, it's a stick to your gun. Structurally fantastic as well. Production-wise, again, I love the fact that they try new stuff. And it's a little bit cleaner, but it all just works. And Pure Noise, I mean, they're my favourite label. And when they put out shit like this, they prove exactly why they're my favourite label. So, it's stick to your guns. They're one of the best American hardcore punk bands of the modern era. Go and check them out. This is really amazing stuff. I also like the lyrical content as well, and the performances are fantastic, uh, the instrumental work against just that really heavy style of hardcore leaning punk. Um, yeah, it's just really good shit, so go check the album out. And that'll about do I don't really have a most recommended for this episode, believe it or not. I would recommend just going, uh, going and listening to all of them. The one I would probably least recommend is Cold Rain, but the only reason I'm least recommending it is because they're the band I'm the least familiar with. I do want to rectify that, though, because from what I heard from this one, they sound really, really good. But yeah, check out all of these albums. I really can't recommend any of them above the others, so just go and find them all. They're all really, really great, and yeah, just really good stuff. Um, as for what's next for me, though, um, tomorrow night I'm looking to start the Peckle 2 Let's Play, even though I haven't 
fully edited and put together the Perkle 1 Let's Play, but that won't uh, be too much of a hassle. And then the next thing after that, possibly a Fire the Night review on Sunday, if there is one to talk about for then. And then, I don't know what's next after that. Probably more PPWS, if it'll be, which, by the way, thank you to everyone who watched The Return Show. I'm so glad that we had some debuts, including my new female wrestler, Deanna Crow, and she... She won her debut. I was actually quite surprised, pleasantly, by that. So, yeah, really good stuff. But that'll be it for me. I will see you all, most likely, tomorrow night, failing that on Sunday. As always, thank you for watching. You're awesome.